Definitely one of the hardest army schools that I've gone to. Hey team, this is Special Johnson with Lancer Brigade Public Affairs. Today, we're going to be having a look at three highly coveted skill badges that the Army has to offer. The Expert Infantry Badge, the Expert Field Medical Badge, and the Expert Soldier Badge. Let's take a look. The initial numbers we started with DSB and EIB uh, were 951. Now we are currently standing at 462. We started with 128 candidates who took the written test. Of those, 67 passed. After day one, we are down to 49 candidates. So over 1,000 soldiers brought their A-game for a chance at one of these three coveted badges. The testing takes place over five days, over which the candidates will demonstrate their proficiency in soldier tasks. What makes getting these badges so hard? The level of precision and attention to detail required to successfully complete each station. Graders watch each candidate's performance with hawk eyes and will fail anyone who gets even the smallest detail wrong or out of order. It has to be precise, there's no buffer, and it must be absolutely perfect. All right, so these badges were developed in 1944 by Army Chief of Staff George C. Marshall, and they were developed in order to highlight the importance of the infantry. In the same year, the Army held a rigorous three-day testing period for 100 non-commissioned officers from the 100th Infantry Division at Fort Bragg. This testing wasn't easy. Out of 100 NCOs, only 10 made the cut. The remaining NCOs were then interviewed one by one in order to determine who had the honor of wearing the first expert infantry badge. The soldier that met that standard was Sergeant Walter Bull. 77 years later, while the standard has changed a bit and in some ways become even more demanding, infantrymen across the Army still adhere to the same standard that was set up by AR 600-73 in 1946. The IB has changed over the decades as new equipment has been fielded and critical tasks are updated. The current EIB is comprised of four events. The EIB Physical Fitness Assessment, Land Navigation Course, Individual Task Testing Stations, a 12-mile foot march, and the final event, which encompasses a total of 46 individual tasks. Soldiers must complete all events to standard to be awarded the EIB. Attrition is high. Since the inception of the new EIB standard in 2018, the award rate as of July 2019 is 16%. On the medical side of the house, you got the Expert Field Medical Badge. The EFMB dates all the way back to 1965 as a way to recognize excellence in the medical field. This badge is arguably tougher than the EIB just based on attrition rate. In 2018, when Joint Base Lewis McCord hosted an EFMB, there were originally 238 soldiers, reduced all the way down to 17. That's only a 6% pass rate. It's a uh, strong uh, distinguisher amongst your peers, essentially, as only 8% of the current medical department have the EFMB. A recent change now is that we, we require the written test to be done digitally via Blackboard prior to even coming out and starting day one. The best thing about that is it, it eliminates candidates who weren't prepared and makes sure that we have the best candidates out here. The current EFMB testing takes place over a five-day period. It includes an Army fitness test, day and night land navigation, 39 soldier tasks and drills, and finishes with a 12-mile ruck march. Similar appearance to the Combat Action Badge, the Expert Soldier Badge is awarded to soldiers who are not infantry, special forces, or in the medical field. My biggest piece of advice for every individual going through this process would be to train, train, train. Don't be scared if you fail. Just make sure you always continue to always improve on what you do. So oddly enough, other combat roles such as scout or combat engineers couldn't even test their knowledge or their soldier skills to earn an Expert Badge until the creation of the ESP. The ESB entered service in October 2019 as a way to recognize soldiers' lethality and effectiveness. The tests take place over a five-day period and includes an Army fitness test, day and night land nav, 30 soldier tasks and drills, and finishes off with a 12-mile ruck march. The concept of the Expert Soldier Badge was proposed in 2015 as a way to improve combat readiness across the Army. In April 2017, 56 soldiers were selected to test the feasibility of the ESB right here on Joint Base Lewis-McCord. Of those who tested, only 12 passed, 
putting the pass rate on par with the EIB and the EFMB. So the goal of the ESB is to increase lethality across our force just like the EIB. The culminating event of E3B was a 12 mile ruck march that kicked off at 0500. Candidates had only three hours to complete the march. Rucking 12 miles with a 35 pound pack is hard enough as it is. However, these candidates had to suffer through the dark, cold, pouring rain. Only a couple of hours after the last soldier crossed the finish line, the sun came out just in time for the pinning ceremony. There were a total of 21 EIB, 9 ESB, and 23 EFMB qualified soldiers who made it all the way to the end through the gauntlet that is E3B to earn their respective badges. Well, there you have it. Just a little bit of history and an inside look on the U.S. Army's expert badges. This is Special Dean Johnson, signing off. Seize the high ground.